Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Today we continue on my much-loved shark intelligence series. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at an aspect of shark behavior I've touched on a number of times. That aspect is personalities and how much they vary. Now, I'm sure some of you might be wondering how personality relates to intelligence. And the answer is, in more ways than you'd think. So, the main question we're answering in this video is, do sharks have personality? Short answer, of course. But it goes so much deeper than that. Some of you might ask, to what degree do they have personalities? I'm sure you've met plenty of dogs in your lifetime, each with their own personalities and quirks. The same thing goes for sharks and many other animals. Let me give some examples. We all know about how scientists tag sharks in order to track where they go, right? One thing multiple scientists from multiple institutions have noticed is that many individuals will do the same thing over and over again. As in, one shark will stick closer to shore, while others will explore deeper waters or go to the open ocean. Repeated behavior. It's the equivalent of you going to the same series of restaurants throughout the week, or having a usual spot you like hanging out at or having coffee at. This shows preference for certain things when it comes to sharks. Actually, I would argue that we can apply this to most animals today. Sharks have certain behavior traits, just like humans and dogs do. Many divers will tell you how some sharks are super curious and will swim right up to you. No, they don't think you're food. Others will be shy and timid and keep their distance. Believe it or not, sometimes sharks have bad days and can be really cranky because of it. That's why when divers first encounter a shark on a dive boat, they will sometimes say they need to see what kind of shark they're dealing with. That's not referring to what species the shark is, but the personality. Are we dealing with a calm and curious shark? or a shark that's had a bad day. Or maybe the shark just doesn't like company and prefers solitude. It's the equivalent of those of you who prefer not to go to the club, like me. Sure, I don't mind going out with trusted friends every now and then, but I'm a man who values his solitude on a quiet Saturday afternoon. Some sharks are like this as well. On the other hand, I've gone over in other videos how some sharks will hang around certain individuals multiple times. Shark friends, if you will. This is especially prevalent in species like the sand tiger shark. Shark toes, what does any of this have to do with intelligence? An aspect we always attribute to what we consider intelligent animals. Complex social behavior. But shark toes, they aren't doing any of the things that mammals or birds do. That's because sharks aren't mammals or birds. They're sharks, and sharks are different from mammals and birds. I know, shocker. Let me give you an example of intelligent shark behavior. Let's check out a video from our friend White Shark Videos where he introduces us to a shark named Blackgill. Blackgill has this habit whenever she is trying to catch the bait from the men on board. Watch and see if you catch it. Bet you didn't expect that. The guys on the boat didn't either. Blackgill would use other sharks to distract the guys on the boat so she could swoop in and take the bait. Please go and give the full video linked in the description a look, cause me just saying this doesn't do it justice. It's a short one, but worth its weight in gold. But think about that for a sec. 
The shark understood that someone was not only holding the bait, but would pull it out as soon as the shark got close. So she waits for another shark to approach the bait, Springer Trap. She understood cause and effect. Sharks are very aware of where our eyes are, and Blackgill uses this to her advantage. That is nothing short of fantastic. White Shark Videos has another video where he talks to many shark experts about shark personalities and individual sharks they've encountered. This is an absolute must watch. All the experts in that video bring up individual sharks by name, each with their own personalities and quirks. And you can see the joy in their faces when they bring some of these sharks up. One gentleman even said that he gets attached to these individuals. Skylar Thomas, the gentleman behind White Shark Videos, was even kind enough to share his experience with sharks and their personalities. I think there's a common denominator in this discussion about animals having personalities. Regardless of if we're talking about sharks, different species of sharks, or even talking about classes of animals ranging from fish to mammals. That denominator is how long you, the person, spend with that animal and closely observe the animal. Did you take the time to even witness things that could be perceived as personality traits? Let's look at an example that's very different than a shark, a dog. I say different because it's a mammal and it's associated with being a human companion. And there are still people who don't want to credit dogs as having personalities. But you also have people who treat dogs very poorly, pretty much just own a servant, um, don't do much other than use the dog or discipline the dog. And then you have people who have close relationships with their dogs. And those are the people who will say, yeah, I know my dog has a personality. So you don't have to go all the way down to sharks to see humans denying that other creatures have personalities. Sharks are a challenging example for some very fundamental reasons. Fish are physically very different from humans and they live underwater. Therefore, the being underwater part reduces the likelihood of us spending considerable time with them or even being able to observe them compared to many other types of creatures on the planet. I branched out from sharks a while ago and what I experienced personally is that regardless of the creature in question, it wasn't a matter of whether or not that creature ever possessed the capacity to have a personality. It's that we never bothered to pay attention long enough or closely enough to realize the personality was always there. I work in animal advocacy, so what I also see is that it's easier for humans to treat animals a certain way if we keep a separation between them and ourselves. Meaning, if we view them as less intelligent, if we view them as not being capable of having personalities, if they aren't sentient, if they don't feel pain or don't experience pain the same way we do, or whatever it is that people want to argue, all of those arguments can be proven untrue just through observation. The real question is whether or not we want to see. Mr. Schuyler is absolutely correct here. You'd be amazed at what you can find out about animals if you look for it. It's one of the reasons humans became so successful as hunter-gatherers. Observation. Back when there were no phones, computers, or social media, our ancestors conquered nature by watching it. Sitting in fields and trees for hours, observing what was in front of them. It's part of the reasons our eyes face forward. This is also something we have in common with sharks. While some sharks learn to hunt through trial and error, some learn by observing other sharks, especially young sharks. Famous shark diver 
Christina Zanotto, has even noted that when she removes a hook from one of her sharks, other sharks with hooks in their mouths will notice this and swim up to her and all but stop so she can pull the hook out of their mouth. Even if she isn't successful at first, the shark will come back repeatedly. Again, the understanding of cause and effect. All of these are but a few examples that clearly show that sharks have a wide variety of personalities, just like we do. But I wanted to end things by posing a question for my shark scholars in the audience. I've referenced the international shark attack file many times in my videos. Most people are shocked by how few deaths there are by sharks in the past 440 plus years. This is not to downplay those who have been killed by sharks. Them and their families have my condolences. Looking at the number of fatalities, a thought crossed my mind. What if the few deaths we know of on the international shark attack file are a result of personality on the shark's part rather than the species? I've shown many clips of how disinterested most sharks are in us. What if the times where interactions with sharks turned violent were because of the shark's personality? Just like humans that have done horrible things in our history were a case of a particular personality. Just some food for thought. Anyway, this is going to be where we end today's video. Thank you for once again giving me some of your time. Remember to eat lots of eggs and bacon, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then.